daughter, bro. Like, because I, I can easily get caught up to some, and then some lead to some. And I know me, bro. I keep my, I keep my thing on me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I, psh, hey, I ain't. A, I'm already hot headed, bro. I'm already hot headed, so that's why. I, I remember just, when you told me you grabbed the, the GM head. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I can't believe you told me that. I can't believe you did that, bro. You said you grabbed it. You grabbed the man head, bro. I was that. That's <laughs> what up. <laughs> of the Arnold Stars podcast. I got another Florida boy in the building. SSU finest, my boy Alante Fena. What's good with you, man? What's up, bro? You good? How you feeling, man? Yeah, Tell man. me how you feeling. Tell the people how you feeling, man. They give them a little taste of who Alante is, man. Introduce yourself, bro. Alante Fena, man. Lake Wells, Florida, you know, like he said. Six foot five uh, guard. Hey. I'm here. You here? Yeah. You back in Chile. Back. back in Chile again, man. How it feels to be back just out here, just in the game in general. Honestly, I was I was happy that I got a call to come back to Chile, bro. Right. Because uh I felt like I left something here the first time, you know. Like it was my first year out. You know, I ain't know much about the game. I just yeah. remember I, I left the goddamn window open. <laughs> I left the window open. Oh, that junk catch all that ain't it. What? <laughs> it's so strong. Yeah. But like you were saying, you you feel like you left something. What do you mean by that? Like, you know, it was my first year. I, you know, I didn't know nothing. I didn't know much about being a pro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I had to learn and adjust fast. Like I only got two games with you and Brandon. Mm -hmm. So, it, and then unfortunately that we needed they, the team needed a big, so they came in. the business. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know I didn't know that part, that side of it yet. You know what I'm saying? So right. That was tough for me, but I mean. So when you coming in, you just thought like it didn't really matter who was on the team. You just thought as long as you played well, that's all that mattered. Yeah, yeah. For the most part, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. But now, as I'm older, I learned. Now that I'm back in Chile, I know the business side of it, and I know, you know what I'm saying. You got to buy in regardless. Mm -hmm. It don't matter who you are. Right. So, what about what about that business side? You talk about that business side. Like, what's the what part did you really like? It surprised you. You feel me? Like you didn't know like it was gonna be like this. For one, I didn't I didn't know that like they would make a certain de a certain de decision so fast. Like you know what I'm saying? Like we only, I was here two games. And I'm like, we won those games, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, huh? Like, I was just confused because, like, you know, I'm coming out, I'm I'm that guy, you uh -huh. know what I'm saying? So it was just, it was just a humbling experience for me, bro. Like, like I didn't, I didn't expect that. That's what happened, that's what I said. But then you went down, but they looked out for you and you went down to second division, still hoop, still professional. Yeah. Well, what was that experience like for you? Like, that, that was, that, that was fun for me because I ended up averaging 32 a game, leading the league in scoring. So that boosted my confidence. But I want to talk about what happened in that situation because I was never really clear. Mm -hmm. You was y'all was winning. Y'all yeah. made the playoffs, uh -huh. but you left. Yeah. Why did you leave? Hot headed, bro. Young, what you was mad about? Young and just like I was frustrated because. I had done, you know what I'm saying? I got cut from the from the first league, went down to the second league. But do you know how hard it is for someone to just get cut and then automatically get another job immediately as a rookie? Yeah. Like, I didn't, you I know didn't, that now? Yeah, I know that now. But back then, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm coming out, I'm averaging 32. You know what I'm saying? Just like, let's go, I'm gonna go with you, for uh -huh. instance. 
you in Chile. Right. You you done did everything you can do in Chile. Right. But you still end up coming to Chile. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's an example. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like we don't know, but God got certain yeah. things for us mm-hmm. that we don't see at the time. Right. That's why I'm back here, and I'm back here for a reason. Yeah. Do you know what that reason is, or you just not yet? Like, no. I'm not, just, <laughs> not, not yet, but I know I know I'm here for a reason, right? You know? Know, that's what it is. That's why I like go back. I feel like I left something here. God brought me back here. It's, I, that's how I got. I look at pretty much all my career, but it's got to be like, bro. When I come back here, I, every single time, like at least the last four or five years, I come back here. I'm like, bro, I'm never coming back here. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy because I said that too. I said, bro, I'm not going back to Chile, bro. And look, five years later, I'm back here and I'm happy to be here. You right. know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, I got my, my people, my family. Yeah, your family. You know what I'm saying? We got a great team. Yeah. We will be five and one right now. We rocking. We rocking. We rocking. I'm not playing as, well as I want to play, but I'm a team guy. Talk about it. Let's talk about it. We can all go right into it. Let's talk about it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's eating you up, boy. I know it's eating you up. Listen to you. <laughs> Caught in the loop, boy. Like, bro. Oh, my God, bro. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't even the bad. It's mentally. It's yes. And that's really, bro, that's why I say we got to talk about it a lot of times because, you know, a lot of guys don't talk about the mental aspect of the game. And that's pretty much all the stuff that I talk about. Bro, the game has got to be, I say, 90%. 90, 92, 93. It's high. Yeah. It's definitely high because it's like, bro, you work hard. I can't take nothing. I see you. Yeah. I see how you work. I see how you put in the work every day. And it's just like, I see. It's not like this is your first time hooping that I've seen you in some place. Mm -hmm. But it's just like. It's just not clicking. What what is going on? Like, if you could put something on it, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. if you have like one thing to say, like maybe it's this or maybe it's that. Overthinking. I'm gonna just say overthinking. I gotta relax. Relax. What are you thinking about? The last time you was here? That's exactly what I'm. I was thinking about, but I let it let it go now. So I'm just gonna just play, bro. You know what I'm saying? So you're still feeling from like the last time, but, but the last time was just Brandon came back. Yeah. Y'all played the same position. Like if that would have been like if I st- I came back and then we got a big, but he came back and y'all played the exact same position. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like they got rid of you for not being productive is just like we just won a championship here and he's coming back yeah so they gotta go with they him. gotta go they with gotta the person we just won a championship here mm-hmm. and the team we want to bring the whole team back of course you're going that makes more sense and y'all play the same position yeah so and then you see you the league is like it is now mm-hmm. three imports and what does every team got mm-hmm. two bigs and one guard yep for sure we had two guards mm-hmm and I'm a small forward man. <laughs> <laughs> three, four, oh, three through five. <laughs> I'm playing three through five, playing the five at like a buck 85. <laughs> All dog. Yeah. All dog, man. Mismatch problem, bro. So, after that situation in, cause you was in La Union, you left. Mm-hmm. You felt like that, you said something about your coach like he, he said something about you. Remember we was walking on the street and you said, like the coach said something about you. You felt like that situation you leaving affected your career further on? Actually, it didn't. It didn't, it didn't affect, like I, so from, from La Union, I went, I went, I ended up going home. I had a chance to go to uh, Argentina after I- Got done. Yeah, after I- Yeah, because we were putting up good numbers. Yeah, I had a chance to go to Argentina. That's what I was saying, bro. I was just so confused on why you left. I just didn't understand, because I knew y'all was in the playoffs and- I ain't have no guidance. I ain't had the guidance I needed, bro. You ain't have this? Yeah. I ain't had a guy that I needed, bro. You know, I said on my last episode, I said I wrote a book, I, when I said I wrote my book, and I was talking about you. I said, you needed that book five years ago. Yeah. That's exactly why I wrote this book today. You bro, feel I mean? I mean? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have the proper guidance, bro. And I'm, I was hot. I was hot-headed. When you first met me, that, just, oh my God. Walter, I ain't gonna lie to you, dog. You was, I was like, what is wrong with this guy, bro? Exactly, you was so bro. hot-headed. Exactly. At SSU, you was so hot-headed. I was just like, what's going on? 
What happened? Why you just, it's like you got a chip on your shoulder, buddy. And I, and I feel like I need to get back to that person a little bit to get where I need to be on the basketball court. I feel like I need to get back to it a little bit. Not necessarily all the way, but just have what that, manner? Like, what that, does that do? That chip on my shoulder, it just make me go harder, like, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But you go hard. Yeah, but. You go hard, bro, you work hard. We go to the gym. Seven, eight o'clock, seven in the morning. Then we go to weights. Then we go to practice. And we did that. If we didn't do those, do that in the morning, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been ready for this past weekend. True. <laughs> yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? That's extra work. That's more than three workouts in a day. So you can't say you don't go hard. If you remember what I told you when we played. When not, we played. Not, not necessarily, I'm going to cut you off. Not necessarily go hard. I'm just saying for my mental, I need to get that chip back. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because that right there is just that it brings us out that dog in me bro like mm -hmm. you know how you play hard as heck on the court mm -hmm. i gotta get back to that i gotta get back to that some way somehow i gotta get back to that in my head because that's gonna that's gonna leave everything gonna get better after that mm -hmm. is you think it's a confidence thing heck no mm -mm. it's never about the confidence i just right now honestly You're second guessing yeah overthinking bro Second guessing, I'm not even taking my, I have, I have yet I to take, take the floater yet. I, right? haven't, I haven't took a floater. I haven't took my transition three. I haven't got groove. He, he, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I do, Arnold. I ain't, I, <laughs> where is it? It is. Exactly. The, the, that's what you have. The, I still I'm remember just, this day one, the better thing you got. The, <laughs> exactly. The, the, I haven't did my behind my go-to move behind the back real fast. I made mean, sports center with that and haven't used it once. <laughs> Just scramble. So after that um the the chili situation, where'd you go after that? Okay. Like what's the role been after that up until this point? Cause you came out of school mm -hmm. at what age? Twenty three. Twenty twenty four. Twenty four. I turned 24 when I came to Chile. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you came to the gym and they had the cake for you. Yeah. See, they rock with you. Exactly, yeah. Now, I, remember now, I that. like Chile. Yeah. I like Chile. They rock with you. They had bought, got the cake well, in the gym. Animals. And, and animals got the cake. After I was gone. I wasn't That's how you know it wasn't personal. Exactly, bro. Because I ain't never seen them do nothing like that. Yeah, no. Nah. So That's after that, after that situation, where'd you go? I went to uh, Kosovo in uh, Europe. It's like in between Serbia and Albania. I went there, ended up having a, I started with a team, uh, KB Golden Eagle Yeely. I started there, I was averaging like 13. I was playing real good, but I got, they cut me. Why? No idea. That one I had no idea. We winning, we third in the league. We thought they just like, we just, we just want another player. I was like, hey, what? Man, I ain't even going, I'm, I can't even. I was averaging 13, my, my numbers, I'm like 56 from the two, 34, 35 from the three, 85 from the free throw. Solid. Solid, bro. Rebounding, right. you know what I'm saying? 13, I want to say. As a guard. As a guard, big guard. How many imports was there? It was three. Me, a big, and a point guard. But the point guard ended up, he, he left and went to Cyprus, and then they brought in um, another big, I want to say, I don't remember. but. That season, okay, I ended up, I got cut from that team. I went home for a few days, mm -hmm. and they brought me back out to the same league to another team. They could do that? In that yeah, yeah, in that league, they could. Normally in, in leagues, when you get cut from like here, if you get cut from here, you can't come back to that's the That's only league. in Chile, bro. You can't do that in Argentina either. Well, that's South America. Man, that's South America. Europe, you can do that. That's weird. That's fire. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that is. It is, actually, because somebody's looking like, hey, y'all we don't want to take Right, and guess right. what? I ended up going from that, that that team to the next team. They was at the, they was like in the middle towards the bottom of the league. Right. Best thing I did, bro, is come back there. I averaged eighteen, right. eight rebounds, thirty seven from the three. Mm, that's 50, that was 59. the league. Yeah, that, that was it. Yeah. I was hooping. Right. Hooping. Going crazy. That's when you said you was hitting the, you was getting in the gym more. Yeah, I was, I was, I was lifting. You know what I'm saying? I was locked in. Then that led up into my next season, which was my best season I had. Uh, Denmark. Uh huh. I, Didn't Giles play in Denmark? Yeah. 
So was y'all playing in the same league at the same time? No, we didn't. He was there. He was there like a year or two before I was there. So, but he played for the same. We had the same coach. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So. Yeah, because I used to always talk to the coach about Giles, and he was like, at first he wanted to cut Giles, but he was like, Giles got it rolling. Giles won the championship with him. Yeah, I yeah, was. He watching. said in the finals, Giles was amazing. I remember they. I was watching his like I was following him, and it was like the fourth or fifth. It was like the middle of the pack. Yeah, he played with horses. And end up winning the whole thing. Yeah, because Giles went crazy in the in the finals. <laughs> That's what my coach told me. Mm, That's good. He he would end up retiring early. My boy, you know how Giles is. But I, I know how this game gets. Exactly. Giles what? For y'all who don't know, Giles was our center in SSU at Savannah State. What y'all? Six nine, six ten. Super athletic. Super athletic, shot blocking should have been league. Got league potential. Definitely. Just, but just like a lot of guys in this game, like you say, that mental part, bro, you just get tired. Yeah, um, you gotta be gotta be tough minded in this game, bro. You got to. So after that, um playing with that um that team, where'd you go to next? I went to Denmark. Yeah, from um, Denmark. From Kosovo to Denmark. Denmark mm -hmm. was my best season, bro. I averaged fifteen, six. Better than the team that you average 18 with? Yeah, it was better than, I, I just, cause that, I ended up playing the whole season with that one team. Uh-huh, you're even, okay. You know what I'm saying? So, I just, that was my best season. Like I averaged 15, five and five, and I had like two or three triple doubles that year. Like I was going crazy. I ended up winning second team in uh, all imports, all Denmark. And, oh yeah, that's Yeah, that was, that was my I best season. I see why you season, say bro. that. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh, go ahead. My coach was he was rocking with me, bro. He he let me play. You know what I'm saying? I played the two and then I played a lot of the one that year too. So what I tell you all the time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> go get the ball. Go get the ball. Facts. Go get the ball, man. Ain't nobody and you see you asked Barham today, hey, can I yeah. get the ball, bro? Yeah, facts, facts. I'm trying to I'm trying to tell you exactly what you need to be successful. Mm -hmm. And what's going to help the team because you have such great decision making on the court. You're a tall guard yep. that can get by. Once you get into that paint, what do I say? It's going to collapse. <laughs> Facts. Every single time. And I think that's one thing about playing in different leagues. Like, I don't know how I never played in Europe. Mm -hmm. I played in Asia. Mm -hmm. But I know for some reason, I guess maybe it's here in Chile. It was like that a little bit in Argentina in the second division. But they collapse the paint so oh, yeah. heavy. Thank you, for sure. So heavy. That's why you can't. I swear, I'm like you work on the floater every day. Mm -hmm. You gotta. We shoot it before every practice. That's the shot you must have. Shoot that. I'd rather you shoot that than any layup, unless it's wide open layup. Facts. Yeah, because you, you really. I see now, like. Boy, you ain't getting to that. You're really. not getting to the hole like that, bro. <laughs> not get, unless it's. Do you see what I had to do just to make a layup on two people? Facts. I just thought about it now. I had to go back and watch the, the our games a little bit. Like, hey, okay, I see what I'm saying. Once you get by that guy, that first guy is two more coming. So you, <laughs> you got to either float it, midi, or get off it. And you got the floating. But now I see it. It's mm -hmm. okay. It's I that's what the film for. <laughs> exactly. Like watching. It's never too late. It's, no, no, it's, it's not. Late. No, it's not. No, it's not. You gotta, gotta catch it before you. Before it's yeah. too late, though. We still gotta. You know exactly. what I'm saying? But you know, you got like this two week stretch. Yep. It's just the nature of the game. Exactly. It's just the nature of the game. Mm -hmm. Like even if we is winning, because I get, I remember a specific time when we was in. I was in Uruguay. Yeah. The same thing happened with me, but. I was winning. Yeah. Like we was first in the league. I was top five in scoring. I was averaging like nineteen a game. Mm -hmm. I was leading my team in scoring. We in first place in the league, in the top league, yeah. and they cut me. Yeah. And I'm just trying to figure out like what's going on. Like what's the purpose of you know what I mean? And I just had a conversation with the coach. Like mm -hmm. right, you know how you went and had a conversation with the coach and tried to like, yo, look, I can't play with this monkey. Of looking over my shoulder every second, thinking I'm gonna get that is the worst position to ever be in as oh a player. Oh my gosh! What? Why do you think uh, Steph Curry is so amazing, bro? Because he ain't got to worry about no looking over his shoulder. He don't got to worry. He take the shots that he want. He coach living with him. Right? What was the last game against the Lakers? <laughs> what he had? Nine. He went nine for twenty-two from the three. Twenty-one threes in a game is crazy. That's crazy. 
Four one threes in the game. Man, that's, think about it. He still shot a high percentage. Forty seven. That's forty six. Oh, that's great. Come on. But that's right. That's like like you said. That's the confidence. That's the confidence in the coach believing in you so much that you know what I'm gonna rock with you because forty seven percent is amazing. Uh, exactly. And that's coach, spectacular. Coach trust you. Coach trust you. Right. You gonna go out. You gonna dominate every game. What do you think has been one of your like favorite places to play since you've been overseas? Uh, Cyprus. Cyprus. For sure. How is it over there? It's. I play forty minutes a game, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I like to play. I don't like to come out. I'm. I'm just gonna be honest, bro. You ain't like Neil. Yeah, I like to come. I don't like to come out. Games, bro. I play forty minutes. I like to. I like to play because I can play through stuff, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not good with. Oh all my that, goodness! All that look, at, look, look at the look at the type of coach that we have. Yeah, like that's just the structure and the style of the and play. I, and that's what makes me good too, because I I can adjust. You know what right. I'm saying? And I know how to buy in. But I would rather play. You know what I'm saying? But I understand that now that I'm older and I've been places. I got the experience. I understand that now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, that's like um, one of the. One just the part of the game like you gotta adjust because you can go from playing forty minutes a game mm -hmm. to a team where they you playing twenty two minutes a game exactly yeah eighteen minutes a game you getting subbed out two three times and that's I I see like that's one of the biggest things when it comes to us as imports because like it's so hard to catch your rhythm like that it, I'm in there for three minutes four minutes and boom he take me out I sit for six yep. then he put me in another four then I come out and I start and I play for five then he, you know especially in the third that's when you really get to rocking and you start feeling the game then you come yeah, out and you sit everything opening up now it's, it's starting to slow down the game started to slow down <laughs> in the third quarter that's when you're really playing yeah you hooping and then you uh, come here then you might come out a minute put you back in for two come out I'm like what are, we, what are you doing yeah but now I see how it is so now I know what I got to do. Like, I know what I got to do. How was Greece? Greece, tough place. Why you say that? Tough place, bro. Oh, what, what does that mean? You got to basketball wise. Like, as soon as I got there, coach was rocking with me. I was hooping. I scored first three games. I had 25, 24, and. The first game I had nine, then the, the next two games I had 25 and 24. So I was on the team. I came late. I came late. I came the second half of the season. Right. Well, not, not the second half, like a little bit. Right. They, had a guy, they had a guy that left and they, they called me. It was like, we need a touch and set. We need a two guard. So right. They brought me in. But when I got there, they had these other guys from Greece that they was already they're guys, you know, they're mm -hmm. locals, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They play, we all played the same position. So coach was rocking with me. Oh, y'all played the same position? Bro, it was like me and like two or three other guys that was- Imports? No, 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 no. I was the only import on the team. Oh, okay, but other guys, like locals played the yeah, same Yeah, and they've been there they since play. August. I got uh, there in November. Kind of looking like a familiar situation a little bit, ain't it? I got there in November. So they already been in the groove? They already in the groove. I get there, I'm hooping the first couple of games. Then coach pulled me, just stop, just stop playing me, bro. Right. Just stop playing me. He just stopped playing me. Like, like, my career low in minutes was in Greece. He, he didn't give you a reason? You didn't go holler at him? He just was like, we got too much of the same position. Then Why'd you bring me here? That's what I'm saying. And they ain't had no reason for no it? No reason. He just said, we got too much of the same position. Like. We gonna look at uh, another guy. I was like, okay, cool, coach. Shook his hand. Oh, okay. That's when you. Yeah, we came to agreement. I was like, that's fine. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. Like, isn't that crazy how like that kind of situation can kind of throw off your whole career just because you know what you would get when you bring still in. average, still average double figures. Uh huh. <laughs> still was, still was. Balling. What do you think your most like your biggest attribute to the game? Like, what you, if you had one thing said. Alante brings this to the game, and this is your. If you could judge yourself, like what is your biggest attribute to the game? If, to a team. To a team. We need you. We need you to bring us to a winning organization to bring us to a championship. What do you do to help us win? What is your strongest attribute? I would say, I can get 
everybody involved in the game. Mm -hmm. I can get in, at any time. I can I can pick out and say this is what we need. I can get a team. I can get the team going uh -huh. by getting by getting downhill, getting everybody everybody getting a touch, finding everybody, finding everybody, keeping everybody happy, right. being a leader. Got the ball in your hand. Exactly. Same thing I told you when you first got here. Mm -hmm. Get it, go downhill, and facilitate. Yep. Especially on this team that we got here, that's the biggest, that's what I see for you as your biggest strength too, is like, it's hard to guard a person who has control in the fast, on the, in the open break. Because mm -hmm. most guys get it and they're going downhill, but they only thinking one thing. They're only thinking the score. See, I'm thinking score and pass, so it's like you gotta respect that. And you you have such a good gift of finding someone yeah. going at such a fast pace. Mm -hmm. That's one of your biggest attributes from my from my side for what I see. When you start going downhill, you can just like you maneuver in there going so fast that they have to come in, and you can find the right. It's not even finding kicking it out. It's finding the right person to exactly, kick it out. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when I was when I went in the game, you was like you should have went there. Yeah, you feel me? I know you that you would have seen that mm -hmm. because that's one of your biggest your biggest gift. I feel like on the court, mm -hmm. and if you had you say your biggest weakness, uh, like I need to work on this. Like my biggest weakness. Hmm. That really takes that really takes studying the game. You can't. You know what I mean? You gotta really analyze yourself and all. I would aspects. say. I would say. I would say I need to trust my, in the game situation, I need to shoot my mid-range more because my mid-range is, I can really hit the mid and I don't shoot it enough in the game, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't get to that stop and pop like I should because I always get by the first guy. Nobody can stay in front of me. Right. I always get by that first guy. I need to shoot my mid-range more, bro, like because that's, I got to get, I ain't gonna say it's as good as yours, bro, but you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna give you a couple of that, but I, I can really hit the mid and I'm tall. You're a tall, what'd I say? I'm tall guard. Bro. Right. So it's like, I gotta shoot my mid more. Like, I gotta stop settling for the three, because I've been settling for the three, and I ain't hitting right now. Mm -hmm. So I gotta get, everything gotta be in the paint, in the mid area right now, until I get myself going and get into that flow that that you done seen, that everybody done seen. Finding so, that rhythm. Yeah, that's it. We both play for uh, horse broad next. <laughs> SSU finest, you know what I'm saying? What can you say about Horace Ball next? Great guy, man. Like, when I first got to Savannah State, uh -huh. crazy. It was like, it was, it was, it was fun because like, I mean, I was used to playing defense coming out of high school, right? Because I, I'm used to crazy coaches. Like my high school, we had plenty of those. So mm -hmm. once I got to Savannah, it was like it was just like it was. You used to this yeah, time I was around. used to it. Like everybody else, like a couple of my teammates, they was they couldn't take it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Coach getting in your chest, coach yelling at you. But I could take it. So me and Broadnax was we was cool from day one. You right. know what I'm saying? Because he knew I was tough. I was thick skinned We both. Was, from Florida, him and my daddy from the same place. They was raised together, you know what I'm saying? Oh, they grew okay, up yeah. together. So I know how t my daddy been on me, drilling me, so this ain't nothing new to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? But Coach, I I, I love Coach Brownax. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, it took some time. Like He's got that delayed effect about yeah, him. Yeah, bro, like, <laughs> later, you know what I'm saying? But that's my guy. Like, Coach Brownax was good, man. And SSU, you played at two HBCUs. You went to two HBCUs. Like, how was that experience of going? Cause I, I ain't gonna lie, when I first, when I first stepped on the campus, I didn't even know what the HBCU was. I didn't even know what that it was coming out of high school. Yeah. You know, but now I understand. I had I had an idea of a HBCU cause like they in high school they my high school actually used to break stuff down to us about FAMU and oh, all the nah. HBCUs and so they used to tell us, but. As far as athletics, I didn't know. I wasn't going there, bro. I didn't know nothing about that, about athletics at HBCU. But mm -hmm. when I got there on my visit, I fell in love. Like, oh yeah, black school. I can go here and do this. Best decision I ever made, bro. Yeah, Savannah State. Yeah. And you went to um, Bethune. Bethune. I went there. 
You know, they were, you, you know what? They was the first team, um, the first D1 team that offered me. Who, Bethune? Yep. Yep. The coach, I was talking to the coach, the assistant coach. He came to a couple of my games. And he was just, you know, just doing the little recruiting, whatever. And then he came to a playoff game. Mm -hmm. And I went crazy. Yep. We was down like 16 at the half. I brought us back. I scored like the first 15 to bring it in high school. Yeah. Brought us back. We ended up winning. He came after the game. He said, "You got a, you got a, you got a scholarship." Hardy County, man. Hardy County. Hardy dogs, man. Yeah. Come on, man. Third man, man. You got to put some respect on Hardy County, man. I know y'all from Pope. Hey, man. Y'all Pope County boys better put some respect on us. One to two players out of Hardy County. I had 25 on Hardy in the first half. I love my Hardy boys now. Oh man, oh, listen, boy. there has not been <laughs> since me and Mark left. There has not been one other player I think made it to a college like D two, D one, or anything since we left. But y'all, y'all play football down there though. Yes. Yeah. It's more of a football team, but still, like as far as basketball, yeah, it it's a wrap. Yeah, that's tough, bro. You should have, you should have. Came on. You know how my dad on. almost brought me. He almost took me to Seaburn. No, you should have came on. I, we, we, we don't know like nowadays. You, you know, came you, on know down. you know how it is. You know how it is. Came on down. You know how it is nowadays. Now everybody. They Imagine got, you coming to the Wells. Anywhere in Polk County, <laughs> Bartow, Lake Wells. No, no, we, we don't talk about Bartow. Uh, we don't do that. Why? <laughs> this is what I don't understand. We don't do that. I don't, this is what I don't understand. Like. <laughs> The basketball, y'all go so crazy, even to this day, talking about old school basketball and this. Yeah. I'm like, bro, what? honestly, I don't care. You got to be from Coke to understand it, my boy. What is it? It's, it that's just bravo. Y'all just talk about, oh, yeah, when we was high school, Great we had grind. me, and we had this person, and we did this. I'm like, bro, what does that even matter now? Y'all love, I, I love it. Y'all love it. I say the same thing, on it, but when they go to talking about it, I have you, to. Put, I just say the comment. I have you to lay right down in. the law. Oh my god! Which, which <laughs> you do it too, don't you? No, I don't get the comments. No, you have to lay down the law though. When somebody say something, hold on. Are uh, we going dead? Are you interested in playing overseas basketball one day? I wish someone would have told me one year after college I would receive my first pro gig. I wish someone would have told me that having an agent does not guarantee that you will get hired. I wish someone would have told me being cut from a team because after 10 years in this game, everyone gets cut from a team. Now, after traveling from over 17 different countries and winning up to seven championships in my pro career, I've put together the six most important traits any player needs before starting their career. So go ahead and grab that ebook and get all the information you need today to start your career. Now you can't say no one didn't let you know. So go ahead, grab that ebook and get started so you can become the pro one day. Let's go. Going from there, we, talk, we talked about the SSU, we talked about Coach Broadnax. Mm -hmm. Going back into your pro career, you talked about like, you know, just knowing the business and stuff like that. What part of this game that you feel like has been the hardest part to adjust to as a pro? As a pro, adjusting to the, to the minutes played sometimes. Like sometimes it might not be your night to play a lot of minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. So you gotta make an impact. My mom always told me, you make an impact anytime you're out there. So now that I know that, mm -hmm. I have shifted my whole, you know what I'm saying? Go hard as you can while you're out there. Even though I do go hard anyways, but now I'm trying to go, I, let's say if I go 110, I'm trying to go 150 while I'm out there now. Right. Because I, I don't know my when I'm coming out. Right. So you're trying to make as much impact as you can. As much as I can in the time. That way, I know that'll lead to something better. Right. You know what I'm saying? I know that'll lead to more minutes. Just do something. Just like the last game, for instance. I was out there. I made an impact while I was out there, defensively. Yeah. I, when, I was, when I was really re-watching the game, I was looking at it. I was like, yeah, you was really I was lock, locking. Locking lock in on the lock from the start yeah. of the game. <laughs> <laughs> From the start of the game, I was locked in defensively. Uh, what's his name? Nineteen. Alex. He couldn't get nothing going. He couldn't get nothing going. I was in him. No homo. Oh 
Oh my god. <laughs> Hey, you know I'm real raw and Oh my god. <laughs> go ahead. What you, uh, from this game, like, what is... If you had a goal, or like you would say, like, what are you trying to get from this game? From just being a pro, like, what is your overall objective? Because you started out 24, mm -hmm. 30 now. So you've been in the game six years, off and on, ups, down, different teams, just the the grind of it all. What is your objective? You feel me? That's something I always want to like bring to guys. Like, what is your objective in this whole game? Because now, after you've gotten through the allure of being a pro, mm -hmm. real life is hitting now. Mm -hmm. You already know what it's like to be a pro. You're already been around different countries. You already played for a different team. Now, at this point in my career, I'm trying to find a home, bro. Find a home somewhere I can sign to, you know what I'm saying? Stick with it and find a coach that just trusts me and just let me you know what I'm saying? Build up and just keep going. Mm -hmm. and play, and I want to play as long as I can, bro, and build my resume even more, because one day I want to coach, and I want to use this to where I can go back and say, I played at the, the highest level, or the highest level of what God wanted for me, you know? Right. It ain't even about uh, going to, you know, most guys, a lot of guys feel like they just gonna go play in certain places, when in reality, in this game, it's not gonna happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, um... And I had to, I, that was the thing I had to learn too. I learned a lot about it's growing up, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just thought, like, you do, you play good one year, yeah. and then automatically you should be getting paid this much. It's, you it, should it's be. It's so much, it's so much more into this game, bro, <laughs> that, that, that they don't know, bro. Like, what? Touch on something like you just like, just like, what, man? Come for, on. For instance, okay. Yeah. Denmark. I go back to Denmark. My best season, bro. Uh -huh. My best season. I was hooping, doing everything right on and off the court. Uh -huh. This business is so crazy, right? So, that was my best season. I'm going to say that again. I got several calls from different teams mm -hmm. like that I just knew, like, okay, I'm going to go and make, you know what I'm saying? For example, I had a team in Italy. Mm. A2, second division. Uh huh. But it's Italy. It's, it's Italy. Enough said. 8,000 a month uh -huh. offered, offered. They could call my my team in Denmark. Uh huh. And they said, they, they said I was a party guy. It was COVID time, bro. I never left my house. I never went to a club out there. We couldn't leave the house. Right. But they said that because I played my music in my room. And they said, I, I, I guess because I played my music too loud or what? And I, and I wasn't like, I'm not like a, I ain't gonna say not a friendly guy, but I'm not, I'm from Lake Wells, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Lake Wells, you know how it is, bro. You done met several oh Lake Wells guys, Oh my goodness bro. gracious, bro. Why is it like that, bro? bro like, I don't understand. You're a product of your environment. Like that's true. That is big, that's true. You know what I'm saying? That's so, true. That's true. That, that you just hit it on the head. You yep. just hit it on the head, bro. Like in Lake Wells, we just so like. I don't, what's the word I'm looking I, for? How, it's like, why? It's like somebody like I, I'm trying to find the word too. It's like you always on go. Yeah, you and you always like, you always combative. You know what I'm saying? Yes, that's, that's, the that's word. a good word. That's a very good word. Like it's like. So I had to grow out of that too. You know what I'm saying? Like. But just, I'm just always be, ready for somebody to say yeah, something. I'm exactly. ready to like, what you said? I'm in Why the, you don't talk to me? I'm in, the, I, I'm in defense, defense mode, mode. all the time. That's what it is. Yep, defense mode, like that chip. That go back to that chip. It's good and bad. Though. It, it's it's good double and edged sword. Bad. Yeah, it's a double edged sword. Because yeah. there's one thing I did realize when I was in when we was at Hardy, and we moved up to four A. And then we started playing against Pope teams. Mm -hmm. The first thing I realized, I'm like, bro, why is all these guards and all these players so scrappy and <laughs> just so angry? <laughs> like, <laughs> so we train. They just so angry so and just train, like, I'm bro. thinking like they really want to fight on the court, <laughs> like. But that's just how we play. Like, we taught to get after it, bro. Like, by any means, like, it's you versus me. And we can try to take you out. Like, you know what I'm saying? We trying to take your head off, bro, by any means. 
do whatever we got to yeah, do to win. Right, that is it. A product of the environment because Fast. all pro teams like that. Yes, <laughs> all of them are like that. All of them are like that. It's like everybody just has this like, what's up? What you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> Quit. Yeah. You get fouled. You, you, what's up, bro? <laughs> bro it's basketball, bro. I'm going. You gonna get fouled? It's going, that, if you ain't, how you gonna get mad at getting fouled in a basketball game, bro? In a pickup, bro? You stop like that one time, bro. Bro, that is crazy. Cause even even my guys that made it to the league be on that too. Still, <laughs> you play the highest level of basketball and you still act like that. That's just Polk County, bro. Anyways, man, yeah. you you now you're a father now. Yep. How has that changed your life? And just talking about like, let's talk about like just the life aspect of the game. You know what I'm saying? Because you, we get so caught up in the basketball and trying to be this figure, mm -hmm. you know, and real life is happening. And that's the one thing that I always try to really talk about is don't forget about the real life and the real responsibilities that we got. Facts. You know what I mean? And how we navigate our real life with this life because we're we from the crib, we're from the States. Mm -hmm. We're coming on a whole different country, six, seven, eight months, out, sometimes 10 months, you know, and it's sometimes it's like creating a big separation. And now that you have a daughter, I have a daughter as well, you know, how is that balancing that dynamic? You feel me? Because this is your first time away from her, really, isn't it? Or did you go play before? In Greece, I was away from her. Uh huh. Yeah, but well, she was young, so. I, in Greece, no, she was. Actually, she was born while I was in Cyprus, and then I went to Greece. So I was with her. I went home. I, I went home uh, in March. I caught her birthday, her first birthday. I made it home in time for her first birthday because Cyprus League finished early. Okay. Yeah, we finished in March over there. So I, I made it home right in time for her birthday. We had her birthday. She was just turning one. So. But I didn't. I wasn't there for the birth of her. Like I wasn't there for her birth. I wasn't there for the birth yeah, of my daughter. Yeah, I had to see it on Facetime, bro. I was shedding tears like I couldn't hold back the tears. Bro. <laughs> I was just so happy. Like that's my baby, bro. Like she just changed me a lot. Like did she feel like she calmed you down? Yes, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because now it's like I can't yeah, be that. You can't, bro. Because, because I know any little thing can I can get in trouble, bro. And I can be going away from my daughter, and that's that's not gonna happen. That's, I'm not gonna, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm not gonna, yes. I'm not gonna jeopardize being away from my daughter over something so small. Yeah. As as opposed to like something like, you know what I'm saying? Go back to that Polk County thing. Like, I'm not doing that no more, bro. Like, because I have a daughter, bro. Like, because I, I can easily saying. get caught up to some, and then some lead to some. And I know me, bro. I keep my, I keep my thing on me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I, psh, hey, I ain't. A, I'm already hot headed, bro. I'm already hot headed, so that's why I, I just. I remember when you told me you grabbed the, the GM head. <laughs> bro. I can't believe you told me that. I can't believe you did that, bro. You said you grabbed it. You grabbed the man head. Bro, I was. That, that's. <laughs> what up? <laughs> Bro. I can't believe you did that, bro. I was you actually grabbed that man head, bro. Bro, I grabbed the grabbed the back of his head, bro. And I told him like, bro, like where's my money, bro? Like what's going on? I will pop your melon, bro. Like I really tried to squeeze his head, like I can really pop the man head, bro. Like <laughs> Nah, but that was crazy, for real. Oh my god. <laughs> that was the old me, bro. I ain't, I ain't that person oh no more. Oh my god, bro. Calm. You my daughter got me calm. Yeah, bro, you can't be doing that, bro. You can't be grabbing nobody by their head, bro. That was, that, was, that was young Finn, man. I'm older now. I'm, I'm 30. But it shows you, like, bro, that's how... Growth. It'll make you go crazy over here, bro, because, like, they, the whole money situation, like, people got families, bro. Bro, we away from our families, bro. Like, they don't understand. And you don't want to give me my money? Yeah, like, that's all you, that's all. That's why we're here. Exactly. Yeah, I love the game, but I need to get paid. Yeah, I got day, That's what it's about. We got to get paid, bro. We over here. Excuse me. 
we over here away from our families, bro. Right. We got to get paid, bro. Like, come on. They should be on time. On, on time. On time. Have you ever been in a place where it's on time? Denmark. Denmark? Denmark, Cyprus. That must be a Europe thing. Europe. 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 <laughs> hey, Europe. Europe. <laughs> It must be Don't get me wrong, I like South America, but South America, only thing I don't like about South America, it's more cutthroat, bro. Whew. It's too cutthroat. Like, Europe, they believe in develop. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they rocking with who they pick. Right. You know what I'm saying? South America, nah, you gotta be on point. Every, no. In Europe, they're rocking with you, bro. Mm -hmm. They're rocking with you. They gonna, you know what I'm saying? So. I never understood that about the game. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I did spend the majority of my time, but that happened to me in Asia too. They cut, there was one in Thailand that was pretty cutthroat as well, but I never really understood that about the game. It's like, bro, this game is about chemistry. Hello. <laughs> Do you really believe you're going to just get, now I understand that some guys come in and they're just. Yeah. Some, yeah. Just try yeah, And exactly. it don't fit no system or exactly. nothing. You exactly. gotta, let's get this out of here before this gets too bad. Mm -hmm. But just changing a player because they didn't start off going for 30 every game. Yeah, like, that, God, that's not even realistic that's not basketball. Realistic. That's not realistic at all. No. And Never. so you just get cut. We're gonna get rid of you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. What is that feeling, bro? I know for me, I think that's like, if you had a nightmare, the worst nightmare any basketball player has like being cut. Yeah, bro. What is that? Because of what it does to your head. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm Because we, we play this game and we put so much into it and it's just like a person just saying, nah, you trash. Yeah, bro. You're like, not good enough. We don't need you. You ain't good enough to be here. And you be like, bro, but this, like this, I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> like what? <laughs> really? <laughs> like I'm from the states, right? I'm from round the way. <laughs> I'm leaving there with something. <laughs> Get your hand <man>, off, <laughs> bro! Oh like, my god! Like, what? You really? You really think of all people? Come on, like, like, come. Let's be for real. If we line this up right here. <laughs> This person will never win a game. What is one thing that you want to know like about the game that you think that I can help you with as far as understanding or something you can add to your game to help you in your future? Because I've been, I know you got guidance from, you got a lot of older heads. Mm -hmm. I know you talked about um, your cousin, B, mm -hmm. my boy, a lot. But y'all just got, y'all, boy, y'all, Brothers to the like, y'all ain't cousins, y'all brothers, y'all bump heads so much. So Thanks. <laughs> I know it's hard to like come to him, yeah, and like get something. So, how can I help you in any kind of way? You know what I'm saying? Like, what you know, like I can see, like I see because I ain't gonna talk to you like I'm a pope because like, you know, y'all yeah, just yeah. like, I don't know, it's like it, it's too no, much it's gatekeeping. I was yeah, like, yeah, that's what it, bro, with you. Like, like I've been, I, I, you in Chile, you the golden Chile, bro. Like, come on, let's just, you just broke the, you just yeah. broke the, the, all the points. That, that is crazy. I you know what I'm saying? On, so, like, yeah. with Chile, I can learn a lot from you because you've been here, you have the experience. Mm -hmm. That's why I've been, I've been up under your wing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm older now, bro. At first, when I first met Owner, when I first met Owner, I didn't like Owner, <laughs> and I had no reason why, no reason at all. <laughs> I remember the first day it took when you came to our runs. I'm like, this? Who? Oh, he from. I don't care. He from Hardy. It's Hardy trash. <laughs> Just being honest, bro. I never. We be Hardy by 50. <laughs> like, when we left, bro, they were terrible. So, but. I was the hot head. I right. It. You know Grabbing him by the back of the neck. Yeah. Head. But now that I met Honor, you know what I'm saying? Honor's a great dude. I appreciate that. You feel me? And I, since I've been here, I've been a bunny your wing. I've been working out, which I see you work hard. I work hard. Mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot from you mentally. You're a smart guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm. I, that's what you're helping me with, with my mental, bro. And that's what I need right now. 
I feel like that's just my one of my calls. Because you you know how to stay calm, bro. You know what I'm saying? Right. As opposed to me and B talking. Oh, you trash, girl. You need. I, bro, I, you know I, I don't understand what. My dad. Oh, you trash. My mom. <laughs> bro, they be. Remember, I asked him, your mom talk to you like that? <laughs> you mediocre, son. You trash. Wow. Bro. But. Product of my environment. Product That's how I'm raised. Man. You know what I'm saying? Dang. That's tough. I got to hear that. That's Lake Wills, bro. Yeah. That's Lake Wills. I've always. And I love my hometown. Right. I've, I've always, I don't know, I, I just try to change, I just understand like positive reinforcement and being calm mm -hmm. in the eye of the storm because it's like it's always a battle. Yeah, because if you if you don't, like I had to work on that. I got better as that as I got older, like positive, being having a positive mindset. I pray for a positive mindset because I have to deal with all these negative mindsets. Right. So I block that out and go back to my positive mindset and just like Bro Next taught us, what's next? What's next? How many times I say that in the game? What's next? What's next? What's next? You know what I'm saying? You can't think about, because if you're thinking about, that's why I say I was overthinking, bro. I'm thinking about what happened this last play, so now I'm, I'm leading to other disastrous plays. One play you know lead, don't let one play lead to the next yeah. play. Yeah. Look, man, this, we gotta work on this camera thing. This joint about to turn off, but it was a good yes, chopping it up with you. You know what I'm saying? We gonna be good. You know I'm here with you, rocking with you every day for yes, the sir. boys. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad you came on to bless us with the, you know, just chopping it up on the podcast. Like, hey, hey, good night, fit boy. Fin up the dreads, man. You know what I mean? Hey, y'all see the, the waves on the wave, man. Oh, man. Appreciate y'all, man. That's all we got for this episode. Till next time. On the stalks. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the show. Please subscribe on our YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and wherever you listen to your podcast. I greatly appreciate it.